Hi guys, in this video we're gonna deal with our first function in Excel. Now first of all, what is a function? Well, we can imagine uh, a function as a sort of a black box and it has a specific output and certain inputs. These inputs are called arguments. So for instance, this is argument one, this would be argument two, and this would be argument three. And what happens inside the function, we don't know. And actually, with our level of expertise right now, we don't care. Later on in the course, we will develop or build our own functions. But right now, actually, we don't care what happens inside. Important is that we pick the right function for the job. And number two is to pick the right arguments for that selected function. And so that, that's, that's ba so basically a function is basically something you would need a function when you, when you need a job done that you cannot easily do with a formula, then you pick a function. And in Excel, there are a lot of pre-built functions and we're gonna learn some today. So one of the first functions we're going to learn today is sum. Yeah. So basically, let's say if I want to sum up all that revenue. Well, okay, one way of doing it is equal, and then I could say that plus that plus that, and so on. Now, the problem with that is pretty obvious. I mean, although we got a short list, it's becoming really tedious to write that formula. Now imagine I have a long list of 200 or 300 rows. It would be very, very tedious to write that long formula. And plus, as I mentioned before, uh, always repeating the same thing leads to possible errors. And we want to avoid that, especially in calculations. So that's why we have the sum function. And the, the sum function, mind you, is the only function which has a button here. All other functions that we're going to be using they don't have a button here. So sum is the only one. It's called auto sum. So basically there are multiple ways of doing auto sum. One way is, is, is just click here and it selects uh, the area automatically above the cell above the cell where you're just uh, are and then just return and you got the sum. A better way I find of doing it and you avoid errors this way is just select the area you want to sum up plus two empty cells and then click on the on the auto sum now why two empty cells well one cell is going to be an empty cell that is going to be sort of a spacer between the the, the data and your sum and the second empty cell cell would uh, basically house your sum uh, later on we're going to be doing sorting and filters and i'll show you that it's beneficial to separate sums from the other from the normal data by an empty row or cell because otherwise your sorting and filtering efforts might get um, hampered by by not having a, a, a separate a, a, an empty line between your sums and your data right now another way of actuating or getting the sum is using the wizard the function wizard and there there is the function wizard and if i click on that I have here on top multiple groups of, of, of functions, but I tell you what, I've been using Excel for over 20 or 30 years, I don't know, and I could never remember where each function, in which group each function resides. So what I do, I just go all, and under all, you've got all those pre-built functions listed alphabetically. And I just roll down and find my function. In this case, I'm, I'm looking for sum. So I'm here at O. So just let me roll down further. R and here we are, sum. Okay, I just click on that. And now we are in our uh, uh, sum function. And now all I got to do is basically select the area I wish to sum. And then on OK. And I basically got it. Okay. And mind you, once I've done a sum, I can always enter that, uh, um, that function by clicking on the wizard. So basically, if I wish to change something here, I just click here and then click on the wizard and I'm back in. And I can basically change my selection. I, I just want to sum this stuff up or I want to sum uh, more and so on. Okay, so you can always change that. Click on OK 
and you're done. You want to go back, just click on the wizard. Okay? And a third way of writing functions, especially simple ones like the sum, uh, is basically look at look at the way it's written up. It's very easy. So basically I can do it manually. Basically I go equals the word sum and then open parentheses, select the area I wish to sum, for instance this 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 area here, and then close paren. And I got it. Okay? So there are three ways of doing it. With the sum, you have the extra luxury of having a button which you could use. Or you could use the wizard where you basically go into, sorry, I'll do it here again. You go into the wizard, go best of all, go to all, roll down the list till you find the, the, the function you need, in our case, sum. There it is. You can double click actually here, you know, same result. And then just select the area you wish to sum. Okay, so that's the second way. And the third way, the fastest way, the ways the pros do it, is basically equal, sum, open paren, just select the area you wish to sum, close paren, bingo. Okay, so that that is uh, the function sum. Now there are other functions which are quite similar to sum, uh, although they obviously deliver different results. And I'm going to write them here. So the first, let me just delete all this stuff. So the first function we know already is sum. Then we have count and count a. Then we have, then we have max and min, and then last and not least average. Okay. And, the, and the, basically, the handling of all of these is quite similar. I'm going to do the first one uh, with the with the with the wizard. Basically, click here the way we've done it before. Oh, you know what? Let me do it manually. I've done it twice with the wizard. Okay, so manually it's like equal sum. I'm going to sum up uh, the hours. So just select the hours and close paren. So that's that's sum. Count is the same way. Let's do it with the with the wizard. I go to wizard, go to all. Now just roll down to C to count. There we go, count. And just select hours and go. So I got like seven. Okay? And count A similarly. Let's go again all count a all right again and okay so you see the difference between count count uh, uh, counts the cells which have numbers in them so although we selected this area here which is basically eight cells only seven have digits or numbers in them that's why we get seven count a is similar to count, but it counts everything, not just numbers, but also text, cells, and so on. So that's why we get eight. It counts everything. And we got like eight cells with content, so it, it just counts eight. Okay, so that's the, that's the difference. Now, if you notice, every time I selected only a specific area. Now, that is okay. However, if something new turns up, Let's say now uh, some, somebody else comes in, let's say like um, uh, Harvey, and he has like 45. I don't get it anymore here because my area just extends to here. I did not cater for any new uh, content or any new rows. So basically the, the best way to, have, to work with functions like those, those I call these functions summation functions because what they do, they, 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 they work over a range of cells. And when you got such functions, it's best to basically cater for the future. And the way you do that, let me start here with the sum. Instead of selecting a, a specific range, why not select the whole column? There you go. So same thing here with count. Just go inside, select what you previously done, and just click on the whole column and you see it changes b double uh, colon uh, b what the colon means two so it means b to b yeah same here look it now it says now it says uh, b1 to b1 colon b8 that means from b1 to b8 well you know what i want the whole column so just click on that so now it says b to b basically the whole column b and the beauty of that is once i add somebody new 
I immediately, now watch it, once I pr press return, immediately my data changes because now the whole column is selected, they cater for any further um, inclusions. Okay, same thing with max. Now I could use the assistant for max or I can do it manually. Equal max and select the whole column. And what max does, it gives you the biggest value. Okay, the biggest value in this case is 50. Let's try it out. Let's do another one. Um, Johnson. Let's give this guy 125. Bang. Automatically, the max is on 125. Now, guess what? Men is basically similar, but in this case, it gives you the smallest value. And the same same handling. Equals, min, paren, open. Select the whole column, paren, close. Okay. In this case, 14 is the... Let's, let's, let's give a... Let's try it out again. Um, Apple and two. So now you see the min has changed. And obviously, count and count A change as well because every time you include a new person, the count increases by one. And average, well, guess what? It calculates the average of the hours. And basically, it's the same uh, handling equals average. Oh, sorry, I misspoke. Average, open paran, select the whole thing, close paran, and bang. So that's the average, 39.9. And if I add something new, let's say peer, and I just type in anything like 334, average changes, count changes, and so on. So, and that's the way you do with functions. You have either, now I've written some of them manually, some with the assistant. I can always click on the assistant to modify a function, or I can modify it here manually. It's very, the, the way the function is built is very simple. You've got the equals, just like with the formulas. Then you have, um, your uh, your name your function name open paran a function name is always followed by an open paran and a function always ends by a closing paran and in there are your arguments now in this case we only have one argument in each of these functions there's only one argument each time it's always the column that we selected okay that's why these are our first functions and those kind of functions uh, are, are often needed you know, to get sums or averages or, or max values or min values of certain certain uh, uh, ranges. So basically, the way you could write them, like we've seen, either with the wizard or you write them manually. With the sum, you have the extra luxury of having a button here, which you can, uh, you know, create a sum by, by clicking on that button. But when you create sums by clicking on the button, I would, I would advise first, uh, select the range you wish to sum up plus two uh, cells and then click on that obviously if you if you if you wish to put the sum here somewhere like like you know way off the data obviously then you can click the thing and then you see now it selected the wrong thing so basically you have to reselect the right thing and then uh, you got it okay so that's basically our first um, uh, the first functions that we now see in Excel. And as you see, functions are basically black boxes. We don't know how these functions work, but we know what to expect out of them. And that's important. We must know at this stage, we must know how to pick the right function for the job and how to select the right parameters or the right arguments for that specific function.